has Beyond Spin Man. Oh, it's Roy. Oh, we got we got our boy. I've heard rumors about this character. About how Three, two, he may be possessed one, as a boy. Alright, we're just gonna tweet up the Okay. We're gonna get him a little slashes out. Roy has like a lot of little setups. I don't know how familiar Kabini actually is with the different setups that uh Roy has. But he's doing okay so far. Man did go random after all. Yeah, Neko's doing a good job. He's playing very, uh, he's playing very close quarters. Which, considering he's fighting Roy, who is a uh, zone breaking character, is can be kind of tough. Oh yeah, good Wonder Wing. Get back into the stage. You see, Neko's like he's thrown for the grab. He knows that if he gets a grab, it's more, it's extremely likely to, to end in getting the kill. Of course, literally- Oh, baby! That, uh, Cabrini's F smash barely clipping uh, Banjo's feet there. Of course, uh, Banjo does have a pretty strong fair, even if it's pretty hard to place. Scary move, it covers a large amount of space, especially when you fastball it. And it has crazy amounts of kill power. Nice. Good nares, good, good conversions, good resets. And one of Banjo's biggest uh, strengths is definitely his ability to, to... He has multiple second jumps. So his ability to kind of stay around the airspace of his opponent lets him get a lot of damage. And he's played wisely. Ooh, baby. That S smash. Kirbini with like a bit of a he's gonna make a bit of a comeback here if he wants to. Oh, okay. He didn't commit to it. He was really close to getting the uh, to getting the, uh, the side B set up. And Neku's just racking on damage. Roy up air, like almost any move from Roy that's not a grab should be able to do it here as long as he gets a proper spacing. That's the big thing with Roy, is like it's Strider fan with this character. Either you get the uh, if you get the proper spacing, you can kill anyone absurdly early, but if you get a little bit unlucky or you just space it ever so slightly, you're not gonna get the kill you need. But there we go, finally coming out at 180. And a Wonder Wing is going to finish it. All right, that was that one was a little questionable, honestly. Uh, Kirbini's DI was pretty spot on overall. I like that little that little uh, jiggy. A man brought that from home. <laughs> Despite my gripes with Banjo as a character design, like in terms of uh, how the character was designed, I'm not like super huge fan of the uh, of the kind of zoner that Banjo is. Uh, he's still like a fun character, honestly. Like I feel like he's really interesting. Um, and he's just like he's just I don't know. He just reminds you of a simpler time, right? At least that's how it feels to me. All right, so our bands were Lilac Cruz and Yoshi Story. Uh, for anyone who didn't know, by the way, Lilac Cruz got a little bit of a fix to make it uh, so that certain recoveries play better on the stage. Yeah, they made it thicker. Was, they made it thicker. Yep, they made it a little bit thicker, so it's a lot harder for someone to just go past the ledge, especially when you have a uh, a recovery that uh, that specifically just snaps to the ledge, like instantaneously, mm -hmm. either from above or below. So it's really good uh, that they made that change. Uh, it also made it so that certain characters you could poke with up airs from below the stage you can't do it anymore. Uh, Ooh, however, yep. Yeah. We're going to Battlefields. It's an interesting choice. Uh, I'm always of two minds with Battlefields. Like, you think... 
because the thing is, like with Banjo, is that the more vertical space you give him to move around, the more likely he is to be able to uh, to play defensively and kind of choose when to come in. Mm -hmm. As opposed to like horizontal stages where Banjo has to make much less difficult reads to get killed, especially with Wonder Wing and grabs. But he doesn't have as much of a place to run to. So it's really a question of like, how are you trying to force the match up? Are you trying to uh, are you trying to force him to play your game, or are you trying to uh, or are you just trying to make it like less confrontational? Because that really Banjo's movement gives him those options. Oh my God, Kirby actually like still making some pretty competitive games so far. The big thing is though, like, can he, uh, can Kirbini kill, uh, Neku early enough to, like, kind of take those Wonder Wings out of the game? Because once Banjo gets that stock, uh, all bets are off, basically. He's gonna have a super strong kill move that's super dangerous. Alright, there we go, we have three Wonder Wings. And a Banjo that's pretty much at that store, but not 100% to Kirby to figure out how to finish the stock in a safe fashion. Alright, good uh good grenade egg there. Good stall. Alright, yeah, and there goes the, the first Wonder Wing. It's kind of like it's all extra credit. If you can get if you can get pit to a uh, to a percentage where he's able where you're able to take him out in one or two hits when you get back, you're basically set for like the next for the end of the game. And that's usually what Banjo's wants. Alright, yep. Good grab into down throw, not quite committing to anything more than an up tilt. Which uh if he had mashed out at just the right time would have most likely been stock. Oh no, Neku that's enough there. Obviously assuming that they might need to go into the stage. And up smash managing to scoop Kirbini, and this is a uh, last stock situation. Neku pretty much has a solid lead, and they're going to take it though, way off stage. Super good. He's making, he's getting some, he's making some good strides here, but he's got to play super careful at this point. This is, uh, this match is not shaping up to be great. And that F smash, jeez, man, that clips from from so far above. It's not like a like North F smash. It just like kind of clipped his foot, and that was it. It was over. And yeah, that good stuff to uh to Neku, who's moving on to play Sensei next round. All right, let's see who we've got next.